one. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Plog. It's a pleasure for me to be here with all of you and all our panelists. Uh, we're going to introduce you to um, something that we work uh, quite a bit. I want to actually acknowledge Muteki for all her hard work and uh, the slides that we're going to present. Um, but this is a labor of love that we have, and we're doing the, this for some reasons you'll, you'll see in a moment. Uh, this panel is about introducing the Meta Mentor program. So let's dive really quick into that, and then we'll explain you what we want to do. From there, we'll introduce our panelists, and then we'll have a chat about you know what the program is. Um, so introducing the Meta Mentor program. So what are the Meta Mentor program goals? So one of the primary goals for us is to bring together mentors and mentees uh, based on shared experiences, interests, and goals. Um, we want to help mentees develop goals to overcome uh, overcome career challenges, uh, maybe identify technical interests, um, and also help them boost their confidence. We we want to broaden mentors' perspectives and mentoring skills. And one of the important things in here is that uh, the mentors are vetted and held to a high standard. That's a very important thing for us. Um, so another important thing for us when we talk about mentoring. Um, is that there's a distinction between mentoring and tutoring. For us, mentoring is uh, focused on the guidance and advice, sharing personal experiences. Um, this mentor program is not intended as a private technical tutor tutoring, although is it is possible that in some circumstances it might feel like it. A good example will be, I want to sharpen my skills on Python, and you might want to share a piece of the code, which will then will give you advice on. Um, Maybe over the relationship of a mentor and mentee, it leads into a bit of the technical tutoring. But primary, our goal is to concentrate on the guidance and advice. A good example for the, for this will be, you know, how to learn about networking and instead of explaining TCP versus UDP. So just keep in, that in mind. Uh, it's going to be a very important for us that you keep this distinction between mentoring and tutoring. Now, the Meet a Mentor program has a series of activities that, that we're going to introduce to you. Um, one of the primary keys on us is we want to be transparent with everyone. We're going to be using Discord. We're going to have one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Uh, so we're, gonna, we're doing our best to try to find matches based on career and technical interests. We'll speak to how does, will that work. Um, we, we're going to have uh, basically sessions, which are you know 30 minute virtual sessions, which when you're matched to a mentor, you can conduct. Um, these sessions will be on Discord on our the Bluetooth Village channel. Um, so you'll find a place where you can go and meet and then just have your uh, session with your mentor. In addition, uh, the mentor program is going to have monthly meetings. Um, so these monthly meetings will be you know about an hour to two hours where we're going to uh, be able to talk about how the program is going. We're going to introduce new mentors to mentees and vice versa. Uh, we're going to try to gather feedback from you, um, you know, what's working, what's not necessarily working. Um, and then uh, one of the other things that we want to do is there is a need for um, sharing important information. Um, uh, a lot of individuals and folks are looking for um, advice on different things. And one way in which we can provide that to many of you is to have regular panel discussions on different topics of interest. Um, if you are uh, an individual that want to be a mentor or you don't and don't have the time, but you have a particular topic which you would like to share and just share an hour of your time to do a panel, we would like to hear from you. We're going to have different topics. This is not blue centric. Uh, you know, if you do red teaming, bug bounty, we want to hear from you. Um, all the topics that we're going to try to use to understand what are the needs of our uh, mentees will be funneled from, you know, the information we collect from uh, the Meet the Mentor program through our uh, interest form. Now, with that said, um, it is time for us to dive into the panel. I will want to, this will be our official first meeting. Uh, we want to get to um, you to know all of the core mentors, and uh, and I think this will be a good opportunity to speak about what the core mentor is. Uh, we're aiming to be diverse, as diverse as possible. 
we will want to include a few more mentors if you um you know if your background is you know if you're asian if you're black uh if you are transgender or gay or lesbian and you want to be in here we want to get you we want to get more perspectives and different mentors from different backgrounds so if you're interested and you're not seeing currently on the core mentors your representation we encourage you to be part of that the core mentors role is to basically um you know set to the high standard you know what the program will be and you know we're dedicating you know a set of time extra to provide this service to to all of you beyond that there will be mentors and you know there will be a path to become a core mentor um you know as we evolve in the program if you want to contribute or if you have more questions hopefully through this panel we'll address them and without further ado i'm going to stop presenting my screen now and um why don't we just, you know, dive into uh, getting to know everyone um, in the panel. So um, we're going to do this in the order that I can see the screen in here. Uh, so um, let's begin with uh, Muteki. Want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Muteki, aka Cassandra, or whichever one you want to use. Um, so I'm actually an InfoSec adjacent person who has been attending DEF CON for a couple of years, uh, got into volunteering at Blue Team Village. Um, and I have a kind of interesting path that I've taken towards being InfoSec adjacent uh, in that five years ago, I was a part-time help desk and AV support person. I personally don't recommend AV, run screaming if you ever have to do AV. Um, but I, I'm particularly interested in, um, so I do, right now I'm a sysadmin and I do a lot of incident response for Azure and O365 um, logging authentication. I'm also a part-time grad student because I'm a complete masochist apparently. Um, and my areas of interest in that aspect are um, a lot of programming, cloud security and architecture, and microservices and server serverless platforms. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Rando. <laughs> to find the mute i've been using discord for for like months now like where's the mute button hi uh my name is rando also known as danny akoski um i uh am a career uh blue teamer threat hunter been in security for about 10 years now uh and i've worked at companies like mandiant and ge capital um uh now i'm a senior technical account manager which sounds fancier than it really is with uh gigamon uh and um, yeah, I've been going, I mean, been in with DEF CON for about five years now. I'm a DEF CON SOC goon, represent, and I uh, run a contest. And yeah, I'm, I'm super active in the community. That's why I really love this stuff. So, hi. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So who is coming next? Uh, Rubix. Hey, everyone. Uh, Rubix4138 here. Um, my name is Xavier Ash. Um, been around for a while, uh, I've got about uh, 28 years of experience, uh, done a little bit of everything, worked for uh, consulting shops, worked for large companies, small companies, done time in government, and uh, did, did some startups. Uh, currently, I um, uh, uh, decided to, to kind of retire from all the consulting uh, and go back into just doing security. So I'm at a uh, financial services firm right now. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of experience with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the blue team side uh, in, in, in architecture and, and building out programs, uh, done, uh, managed a couple of uh, instant response uh, teams over the years. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, the program. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Uh, G. Sure. <clears throat> so I started out life as a systems administrator uh, about 10 years ago. I got into red teaming at uh, in big four consulting uh, about six seven years ago i actually actually switched to boutique uh security consulting on that's still on the red side uh, and i'm doing more management stuff now but occasionally i'm allowed to hack stuff and you know that's about the only happiness i get these days that's so awesome um ali hey everyone my name is ali hansen i actually stumbled across security a few years ago and kind of immediately fell in love with it and really became smitten with not only security, but the people. And uh, I dabbled in security sort of certifications, 
also jumped into the world of social engineering. And um, I really have a very, you know, pretty broad interest base across um, the sort of, you know, disciplines and areas, insecurity, uh, red, blue, purple, CTI, aerospace, biohacking. I do a lot of volunteering uh, within all of these different efforts, um, kind of across the board, including policy as well. And recently I actually started my own company. So I'm really hoping to help you all out if you're interested in learning what it takes to start your own small business, LLC. And um, that's, that's about it. Thanks guys. Awesome. All right. So we get into No Hack Me. Mute buttons are hard. Um, hey, what's up? I'm Mick. Uh, AKA no hack me, um, fed for a super long time. You name an agency. I probably worked there, uh, built out some incident response teams, built out some threat intelligence programs. Um, most recently I worked at the white house, ran a threat intelligence team over the 2016 election CISO for Pete Buttigieg. And now I am currently a security advisor at Splunk kind of taking all the experience that I have and help folks make the trains go. Um, super jazzed to be here. I, I think um, the experience I have, especially on a Fed side, if you like public sector for some odd reason, I'm your dude. Like your favorite Fed's favorite ex-Fed. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. So thank you for being here. All right, so we're gonna go with uh, Moose. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Moose. I also go by Heather. Uh, I'll dox myself and say I'm one of the senior incident responders at CrowdStrike. Um, I dabble in a bunch of things. Uh, I also volunteer as a red teamer for CCDC. Uh, my IT career began in a very strange way. I was a QA tester for the first uh, Droid phone, the first smartphone, um, and it was really enough of a hook to where I got to break that multiple times, uh, and the rest is kind of history. I've done help desk, desktop support, sysadmin, network admin. Uh, right before I was core security, uh, I was a lead data analyst. Uh, and the whole thing kind of just ties together in wanting to look at all the things and not wanting to be put in a box. So if you have multifaceted experience um, or want multifaceted experience and look at the big picture, um, I might be your person, but I uh, eat, sleep, and breathe incident response right now. So. Um, you know, I, I had to ask what day it was today, <laughs> um, but that's me in a nutshell. And I'd rather refer to myself as a DFIR dumpster diver most days than anything else. That's awesome. By the way, I um, was early on on the incident response panel, so thank you for being here again as well. Uh, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna introduce also uh, a, a person that likes to remain kind of hidden on the background. Uh, it's a it's a, a person that I respect quite a bit. His name is. His name is Clay. Hey, thank you, Plug. Um, yep, Clay. Um, been in the field in general for about 20 something years. Um, done a lot of programming and system administration work. Um, the past eight years or so, I've been able to focus on security. Um, and that's been a fantastic ride. Um, I've become more active in the community um, over the past four or five years or so. Um, I'm one of the organizers of Blue Team Village, um, and I love googly eyes. Awesome. You you also have another organization. You you want to you want to do a little? Sure. Yeah. Um, um, help uh, organize uh, Whopper Summit as well, and that's. Um, more of a, it's still security related, but we kind of focus more on hardware, hardware hacking. Um, and that takes place right outside the Philly area. Awesome, thank you, thank you for that. All right, and um, our, la our last core mentor here with us is, is Scooby. Hey, hi everybody, um, Scooby. I've been in InfoSec for almost 20 years now. Uh, I've worked as, um, uh, security analyst, uh, then threat hunting team lead, adversary detection team lead. I built some teams. I moved uh, to a financial institution for almost a year. Didn't really uh, cut it out for me being in that type of uh, environment. And now I just changed and I'm a senior manager incident response uh, 
uh, for a smaller company in Canada, but we have international um, offices. So it's pretty much all around the world. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, a lot of threat hunting and uh, blue teaming in general. Love giving talks. Um, I had the pleasure to do so at uh, DerbyCon, Blue Team Village, uh, NordSec, GoSec, and uh, a few B-sides as well. So. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So as hopefully all of you have heard, we have a very diverse set of individuals that are part of the core mentor program. We all have different backgrounds. Um, I'll introduce really myself. So I go by plug. Um, I do instant response and I lead trade hunting at a, some Fortune 20 company. Um, I think if you want to more know about that, um, I, I'm in the Paranoids team. I'm in the fire team within the Paranoids. Um, and um, I've been volunteering in DEF, DEFCON for quite some time now. Uh, different villages are now pretty much living with the Blue Team Village where uh, they have allowed me to grow and kind of put this seed into this program where we all together are going to bring this to you. Um, so we're going to jump into, you know, some questions. And if, you know, if you're here watching the stream or if you have some questions, um, uh, you know, that, that you want us to give, give you maybe some feedback right here live, then, you know, feel free to send the questions over. Uh, but let's dive really quick into into one of the more important questions, right? Um, you know, because all of all of us are here. But what made you want to be a mentor? What what makes what makes you in this is directed to no one in particular, but we want to know, we want everyone to know what you de decided to be a mentor and what makes you qualified to be one, if you want to elaborate on that. So I want to see if someone wants to raise their hand. Um, Scooby, I think that you have the mic. Uh, well, I decided to be a mentor because some people came to me uh, in real life asking if I would mentor them. Um, I've been uh, trying to be more active in the community as well. Uh, volunteering at the Blue Team Village since uh, its creation three years ago. Um, so when I saw this uh, meet a mentor thing, I uh, just said, well, if anyone wants to learn about this, 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 and this, I'll be very happy to spend some time with you. And uh, for me, mentoring is, uh, is kind of making friends, is uh, sharing experience. And I think that the mentor learns as more as the mentee uh, most of the time. So it's, it's really an exchange. And it's, it's not meant to be one direction. Uh, like I'm not feeding anyone things and I'm, I'm more ex expecting exchange um, and, and learning as well from, from those people, from their experience. It's not because I've, I've been doing these specific things maybe longer than them that they don't have anything that they can bring me uh, as well. Awesome. I saw no Hakimi, you kind of went, oh, well, Rando, Rando, you're ready to go. Yeah, I love this. Oh. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, Mr. Baccio, ex Cizzo, political campaign. Um, I actually, uh, no hack me is actually part of this answer for me because he was one of the very first people that I met when I got my first security gig. Uh, he was actually my team lead way back when, almost like 10 years ago by this point, and kept me in here for better or for worse. Um, I have had a very unconventional road through infosec i've been with a lot of companies that have been laying off and things like that it's been it, it's been bumpy but i'm in a really great place now so i i always find you know for people that are uh like drug addicts and things like that your best uh, help is going to be your sponsors who are drug addicts themselves who have been through that so people that have fell a lot and have experienced that and they know the way back out so um, I, at a certain point, all of these weird things that have happened through my career, I didn't want them to be for nothing. And I also have absolutely no shame in talking about fail stories. I don't care. I love them. I love hearing them from other people. So when I run across people that are afraid to fail or don't want to don't wanna discuss it or just think that they're never going to make it, I'm like, I am an object lesson in how complete failures can actually have some success and don't be afraid of it and own it. So the best way to do that for me and to give back is a mentor type program. Um, so that's why I do it. Like why waste all of that face in the mud time? I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I want to give back to other people about how to give, get back up from it. Awesome. Uh, I guess uh, cool. now hack me. I saw that you wanted to have some interaction. Yeah. Um, so Danny and I go way back, obviously. Uh, you know, I started off in the Navy, I, HHS, CDC, FDA, like a bunch of federal organizations, 
Um, I'm a sock goon, represent. Um, um, I work with Tool. I've been at this for a super long time. I think that the talks that we heard all day, all day yesterday at Blue Team Village, I'm not any smarter than any person that's talked. I'm probably a dum-dum, to be honest with you. But I've been at this for a while. And <clears throat> one of the things I, I, I'm really proud of is I think I've been able to enjoy the experiences along the way. And the important thing is the people that you meet. We all talk about, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I know a lot of people. I, I, you name an agency, I probably work there. If I don't, I probably know someone who has. Um, and I think that's a large part of why I wanted to be a mentor, to make the road easier for the people that are coming next. Like this, this gray ain't from stress. I'm old as shit. So I, I think if I could do anything to make the next generation of security a little bit better, I, we're kind of obligated to as, as security seniors. So when I had the opportunity talking to Clay, like I jumped at it. Why wouldn't I want to do this? Like if I have all this information and all this institutional knowledge about the security game and I don't help other people, I'm kind of the problem. Awesome. Moose? Yeah, kind of along the same lines. Uh, so mine's, mine's a very personal story. Um, I was working at, at a Global 5 for a long time. Well, it felt like a long time uh, because when you're doing IR at a Global 5, you feel years of your life draining away. Um, and I have always struggled with imposter syndrome, no matter where I am in my career. Um, I'm not saying I still don't struggle with it because some days I wake up and I, I just go, oh my God, what was I thinking? Um, but it's, it's a person that helped me during that. And I can go ahead and say his name, Christopher Witter, um, who had, had years of experience on me um, that offered and said, you know, if you just need somebody to ping things against, I'm willing to set up regular mentor calls with you. Um, and literally, I would tell him about my struggle, struggles and my thought process. And most of our calls were, you know, you're doing everything right. And that's what I really needed. And it's so funny that that's sometimes what you need. Um, but just having somebody that might be outside of your normal scope of influence, like talking to you, for me, that was invaluable. Uh, and I, I just feel full of it, you know, because that door was open for me and a hand came down and pulled me up, I should be doing the same thing. Um, and so I really want to make myself available and keep that door open and that chain going because none of us is an island. Awesome. Allie. Hey, thanks. So I actually have a business background and I've spent years of my life really trying to figure out so much in that realm and i really think that everyone here is a big believer in sending the la the ladder back down so as soon as you figure something out you know we should be sharing that with each other and and helping each other um especially you know as a woman in this industry especially as someone who doesn't look like the sort of stereotypical infosec person i uh, i feel very strongly that i want to help people uh feel welcome and give them the resources and the knowledge that I have figured out over the years that, you know, we all have. And so uh, just big believer and absolutely dovetail on everything that everyone said. Awesome. So, oh, okay. I'm your Jackie. Go for it. Um, you know, what Ali said actually resonated because, you know, I'm, I'm a woman in, in an infosec adjacent role, but I've been in IT for a while now. Um, and not only that, but I'm also a gay person. So I've had a, a unique set of experiences, um, and I've also worked really hard on um, on my presentation skills and giving presentations. Because one thing I realized early on is that um, I would go to like you know a small conference or, or talks at work, and there really weren't that many women presenting um, or openly LGBTQ plus people. Um, and once I started doing that, like people came out of the woodworks. I had a lot of people approach me afterwards and just like and like ask me how I got to where I am, and I'm standing there like. I'm like early mid career. Like, what do you mean? I'm no, I'm nowhere yet. But wherever you are is further than someone else has has gotten so far. So, one of the people that I that I um, I kind of mentor on casually on the side um, is a non-binary person, and that's you know they're someone that like I'm you know I'm a, I'm just a boring normal lesbian. Like I I don't know exactly what their experience is like, but I know enough of it where we have some common ground and the way that we interact is just more 
it's more personal and more comfortable than it would be if we didn't have that common ground. And I think that that common ground is important and also just the visibility is important. Awesome, thank you. Uh, actually, I'm gonna make a note in here. Uh, we, we're precisely because of what uh, Muteki said, uh, we were very mindful of trying to find a best match for you. So as you sign up for a mentor MNT, which if you haven't, go to the Blue Team Village, meet a mentor, you'll find all the information you need. Um, we we could collect some extra information if you wanted to, um, you know, just to help you match precisely with someone, you know, maybe maybe you're um, gay or lesbian and you identify much more with Muteki, and so that's an opportunity for you. We don't need it, and it's completely optional if you wanted to, and it's precisely because sometimes you feel, you know, much more closer with someone that is from, you know, that identifies the same way as you do, or maybe at the same uh, background, uh, skin color, whatever it is. So we will have an opportunity to kind of help you with that. Uh, now, with that said, I'm getting some questions from some of the um, the viewers watching the panel. So before I go into those, um, you know, one of the inter interesting questions here to ask is, uh, ha have any of you ever been mentored by anyone? I think uh, Lidmus kind of spoke about, her, ab about it. We can kind of continue with that. Um, and, and then with that question, you know, did that help you in any way? Um, so that is the question. So, you know, uh, Moose, you want to kind of continue since you, you were, you know, alluring to that and then we move on to other panelists? Sure. So, um, at the time, and I, just to say that I've only been mentored by one person isn't exactly true. Um, so I would say that I've had numerous people reach out and say, if you need help on something, um, please come to me. And I've sat down with um, some great folks who do different things. Um, so like on the red team side, uh, anybody that knows Commander OPSEC, um, phenomenal. All of the Dallas Hackers Association folks, absolutely phenomenal people um, to sit down with. And, and a lot of us would tag team between each other. It wasn't formal mentorship, um, but I, I would still say that learning from another person was very, very valuable, um, especially earlier on in my InfoSec career. Um, but Christopher Witter and I actually sat down and we, we scheduled and planned because otherwise I felt like I was getting too shy and I wouldn't ask questions until I felt like I was drowning. Um, and so that was one of the things that uh, really stood out to me as, as a win factor because uh, every week I would have to think, okay, I have this scheduled call, what are we going to talk about? Um, and actually coming up with the problems and coming up with the different points that I was trying to attack it from taught me more in those mentorship calls because I would research first and I'd almost over-research to compensate. Um, and so uh, <laughs> it ended up being a really fun conversation and almost war stories at some point. So I don't know that that's going to be the, the experience for everyone, but I will say that was a very good experience. Awesome. Uh, I think I saw someone else in there. It's Kubi. Do you have your mic on and off? I didn't, I didn't see. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think it's on. I think it's on. Um, no, no real mentor per se or real, um, you know, a very steady uh, opportunity like that. But uh, since I've since since my first time uh, at uh, Black Hat and DEF CON, I've met many people, a uh, lot of people from uh, the Blood Down uh, Slack, for example. I uh, remember at one point I walked out to the Spectre Ops boot and uh, all of a sudden half of my Twitter feed was around me, uh, like Sean McAlf, uh, uh, Arm Joy, talking with uh, Jean Tsikiwi, and I was trying to listen to them and I think my nose started bleeding because I didn't understand <laughs> a single word of what they were talking about. Uh, but, you know, being with these guys uh, over and over and uh, reading everything they talk about, asking questions here and there, uh, I think that I grew more in the last three years than probably the, the, the 10 year before that, just because of the people um, that I was talking with and that they, the, their generosity uh, in general, just to answer all type of question, even if probably the, the question I did ask, uh, they were asked those questions probably a hundred times before, but they still took the time to, to, to um, explain things. And uh, for example, as well, I, I before my first talk, uh, I ran into uh, Sean McAuf and uh, I asked him, do you have a few minutes just to review what I'm going to present? And uh, he did take the time to review my stuff. And it actually really helped me to uh, 
uh, refine my deck and make it more, uh, I think, more interesting for people. And it was very little things that he told me, but uh, that, I keep, that I still keep in mind when I do presentation now uh, to make sure that I incorporate what, what he told me. So th those little things that comes from a lot of people uh, just adds up. And uh, I think that having all the mentor here uh, is a good thing as well. So people will be able to talk to a lot of different people, even if they have maybe a mentor that are a little bit more assigned. I think that it's, I, I, for me, I don't mind uh, answering for other people as well and, and keeping the, the dialogue. And, and if, if, if I can help, uh, I will help for sure. Awesome, Rubix, I saw that you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I was introduced to mentorship at uh, when I got into the startup world. Uh, Atlanta has got a pretty interesting history in security. Internet security systems has produced a whole lot of uh, other folks that have tried to, to emulate that success. And so, um, you know, I, once I got up into that startup world, and uh, you know, everybody was mentoring somebody. Like that was just kind of part of the the job description. And I thought that this was great. It would have been so great if I had had this earlier in my career. Um, you know, I had always been the middle of the road security guy, you know, sometimes in management, sometimes not. Uh, I was never the super elite hacker. I never had, you know, tools in my name. I was never a Twitter superstar, but, you know, I, I do have lots of experience. And, uh, you know, and, and so once I started uh, mentoring on the security side, it, it was really surprising how much of that resonated with people, and I was able to help and give back. And so, uh, so that yeah, that was my introduction to to mentorship was was from the startup world. Awesome, thank you for your answer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more question here, and then we move into some of the questions that uh, we're getting from other people. Um, I think one of the most important questions that we all have dealt somehow at some point in time is, you know, how do you combat imposter syndrome in your own life. Brando, I see you kind of moving towards the mic. Oh, he, he's, yeah. He, no, no, he's no, busy no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Uh, okay, I, all, right, all right, all right. Yeah, this is another one of my favorite, favorite questions because I actually just kind of uh, figured this out in the past couple of years or so. I think I figured it out around Circle City Con. I was presenting there and um, of course, I had always beaten myself up of like, why do I keep getting things and why do people care? I'm you know, like, I'm really nothing, blah, blah, blah. And then I was sitting around with a, with, with a bunch of my friends, people who I really look up to um, that have taught me a whole lot. And uh, they were asking like my advice on some threat hunty thing or like, or something else. And I had kind of this moment of clarity that said, I am surrounded by all of these people who I look up to who I still fanboy over. I could be good friends with them for, for five years and I still fanboy a little bit. And I value their opinions so much and their feedback so much. Who am I to question them if they also value my feedback? Now, this just works for me, right? But I think for me, it is disrespectful and counterproductive if, if, if I'm saying I don't believe in them believing in me, if that makes any sense, right? Like, if I value their opinion above other things, am I calling them a liar? Am I questioning their judgment? So all of a sudden, I'm just like, okay, I'm buying into my, to, uh, for all intents and purposes, my own hype now because they believe in me, so I will out of respect for them. And God, that has made such a difference. So um, every now and again, I, I, I feel out of my depth in something, but instead of getting down on myself, I'm like, cool. I, I, I don't know the thing. I don't know this thing, but please go ahead and teach me. And I am that much ready to light somebody else up who doesn't have that same attitude and makes fun of somebody. So I've gained confidence in doing that, uh, in, uh, in, in, in lighting somebody up for not doing it. And also, uh, it makes my life a whole lot easier if I just believe in what everybody else believes about me. So anyway, that's my answer for that. Um, it was like a watershed awesome. thing for me. <laughs> Gee, I saw you that you kind of went off and off on on the mic. Yeah, I kind of jumped the gun there. Sorry. Um, it's all right. I, I think <laughs> I think similarly, maybe accepting that I don't know everything, which for me, I am a very arrogant person. That was difficult, um, soul crushing even. But you know, accepting that I don't know everything, and that you know, I want to learn from other people, and that they're willing to teach me, and that the things that I you know do know or think that I know. The opinions that I espouse, the things that I'm allegedly an expert on, are grounded in experience and research. 
in you know in, in the things that I need to learn, you know, will also be grounded in experience or research or things that somebody else has taught me. That kind of makes me feel good about the things that I know and you know being okay with not knowing things and learning too. Awesome. Ali, I saw that you wanted to say some comments. Yeah, I just wanted to put out that um, I think it's important for me to just remember that everyone has a different background. Everyone has had different experiences and those are all equally valid and they're all equally valuable. And just trying to remember that um, not only for myself, but I encourage other people to remember that as well and to not diminish their life and their accomplishments, uh, accomplish, accomplish, accomplishments, I, I, I can't even say, but um, too much whiskey already, oops. Um, but then also I think too, um, you know, I, whenever I start feeling just overwhelmed or too anxious about my own imposter syndrome, which I have a ton of because I'm not even a technical person and I'm trying to play in this technical sandbox. Um, I actually try to channel that energy into learning more and um, asking more questions. And I kind of just rechannel that, that energy and that works for me really well. Awesome, Moose. So I've struggled with imposter syndrome throughout multiple careers, multiple years. Um, and while I don't think it really goes away, uh, a really self-reflective takeaway I had was that it's not always been this good um, for me. I'm in a place now to where I struggle with it less. Um, and I have to give credit where credit is due. I have a very supportive team. Um, I have very, very supportive leadership, and it has made all the difference in the world. And recognizing that your environment impact, uh, impacts you, uh, I think, is super important. Um, because when I was struggling at it, struggling with it at the peak of imposter syndrome, I don't think I was bad. Uh, looking back at it, I go, I really did know what I was doing, but I wasn't doing it with confidence because I wasn't around the right people. Um, and I've got to say that that for me uh, was one of the biggest takeaways because it's not like I've necessarily changed very much as a person, but my environment has changed drastically. Um, and I think that if you can't find the people to support you in that knowledge where you are at work, so if you're a team of one or two and you don't really have the people around you that understand what you're doing and can't support you in that way, having a community that does it uh, really helps as well, which is just another reason that I was so happy when Plug said, hey, we're doing this mentorship program thing with Blue Team Village. I was like, yes, absolutely. We'll help out. This is amazing. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I'll add a little bit of personal note in here as one of the mentors that you, you will have the option to talk to. Um, I, you know, my first second was many, many years ago. I was only three hours in there. There is a panel that I partake on DEFCON, and, and this is when I want to acknowledge one of the uh, key individuals. Uh, he's a uh, voice accurate, Mike um, uh, Pertuzzi. Um, he, he runs some stuff in DEFCON, and he, he met me, and we talked, and he actually helped me to kind of embrace the, you know, be part of DEF CON and, you know, get yourself out to volunteer. You'll, you know, do something that, you know, you, you know, that will get you out of that shell. Um, and without having to kind of get him to chat with me, I don't think I will be honestly here. But in, in that regard, for the imposter syndrome, I, I started going to the 2600 in LA meetings where there is a lot of very cool hackers. Uh, and I always felt like, you know, what could I bring to the table? And yet, going you know for many years to DevCon, the two people that really brought always a lot of value to me is uh, Matrix and Vidiot. Um, they're goons, and some of you might know them. Um, and they were very you know not not necessarily mentors, but they allow me to see that a lot of my adventure, at least in DevCon, was up to me, uh, and that I needed to you know that, that I didn't have an accent, uh, and I needed to stop worrying about things and just let be. So. Um, sometimes, like someone mentioned earlier, we just need a little, a little word of encouragement that will allow us to see things in a slightly different way. And in my case, by getting those words, I realized that that helped me break out of that imposter syndrome, which we'll get it. But hopefully through us, 
you'll get to hear sometimes those words of empowerment, empowerment. And hopefully, the same way that some of us has you know influence in our lives, we can do that to you in your life and empower you to grow. Um, and with that said, let's let's kind of go into you know a, an interesting question we received from the viewers, and it says, as a mentor. What would you define as success in this role for you? How can I, as a mentee, get you invested and show accountability? I think that was an excellent question. Who won, who said me? <laughs> Rubix? Yeah, um, I think that one way that we can measure success in uh, from, from our side is, um, you know, uh, very early on, uh, we'll establish, you know, wh what is it that you want to get out of this? And so that way, it's not a guesswork on understanding, you know, did what we, you know, all the time that we spent together, was it effective or not? Like, I, I, let's, let's, let's put it on the table. Wh what do you want to get out of this? And that way we can track that and, and make sure that as we're moving along, we check in. Are we doing anything to, to help you along? Are you realizing you know you have new avenues that you didn't know that you had before or you seeing new opportunities like you know I, I think it's up to us to continually check in with our mentees to understand uh, uh, and make sure that we're being effective not just in the end but uh, throughout the entire relationship awesome anyone else yeah I mean Clay, uh... you wanna... Oh, yeah, go for no, it, no, 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 that's a much better idea. Clay, go right ahead. He's so He's quiet. been quiet. I, I, need, I need to give him one, yeah. right? I mean, he, he needs to speak a little bit. Put him on the spot. Come on, Hanson. I think it's Xavier. I couldn't say it any better. Oh, you ahead, cop Randall. out. <laughs> you <laughs> are the worst. Please, Clay, you should try, though. <laughs> I will unmute just to heckle you. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, well, well, Clay... I will give you my answer, and then you can ask Clay again. He'll be like, yeah, Randall got it. Um, mine is, uh, yeah, uh, 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 to echo uh, what, uh, uh, what, what he has said, is um, it, it's important for, for the, the mentors to check in with the mentee. Now, just as a caveat, like, just because you're matched with one of us, it's not always a match. Like, it's, it's being self-aware enough to be like, listen – there's just no vibe here. And I've had it happen. Like I think of myself as like very personable and I, I really want to help, but sometimes the vibe just isn't there. And that is completely fine. I need honesty from them. And I also, uh, I also want to see that they are uh, applying their own critical thinking skills to what I'm telling them. I don't want somebody just to parrot what I've told them. I don't want them to copy what I've told them because everybody's experience is different. Like if I get, oh, I am a sure what you tell us. Got it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how dare you? I saw what you did there. Um, you know, and, and also be honest with me, right? My, my life outlook is as a straight white male growing up in suburbia and living in a, in a Metro urban, I would love to mentor people from all different kinds of backgrounds, but remind me, check in with me of like, Hey, my experience is different. Can, can you translate this for me? That's how I know that you're thinking critically about it. Um, and, and applying it's, it's kind of the same as when you, have a, you know, if you've been in a, a sock for a while and you have a new analyst and uh, um, it's clear that even when I tell you something, you haven't actually done the legwork to, 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 to figure this out. Like, oh, it didn't work. I gave up. Tell me what to do next. It's not linear, right? So um, I just want to know that, that what I'm telling you is getting through and that I am understanding you. So that communication, um, as long as we, ha we can build that, I know this is going to be uh, a very uh, fruitful experience. And I, I think Clay should follow up with that. Yeah, Clay? Sure, sure, I will. I think just taking the first step and, and to, to becoming involved, uh, to be a mentee, to open yourself up to the experience is already a, a success. Um, it, it's about the journey as well, right? It's, it's not about the destination. So... If you're learning and you're growing, that's what it's all about. And half of that is really up to you. And, and if I can guide and support you in any way, shape, or form, like, that's what it's all about for me. 
Awesome. And and in this case, um, you know, this is why this is a good time to actually do a call for mentors. If you're if you're a men if you want a mentor, right? Um, and you 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 feel like you have something that you can bring to the table. Remember, this is not about you know if you're very good at something, you know that's great. But if you have some experience, right? If you bring you bring in a unique background, like Randall said, right? That you know, like we you see the panel here, and you you find, hey, I don't see my representation. Then we want you to be here. We want you to be part of that, so you can help someone like you. Um, so go ahead, hit the Bluetin Village site, look at Meet the Mentor Program. You know, go to the farm, and you know we want to talk to you. We really want to talk to you. Um, another great question that we received is, what makes a good mentor, and how can mentors improve their mentor game? No, how can we? Um, what makes a good mentor? I'll be honest. Like it, it's going to vary from individual to individual. What works for, for Clay doesn't work for Rando, doesn't work for Muteki, doesn't work for Moose. Like, it's going to be individual. And, and to Danny's point, if you and I hang out and it's not a match, cool. Like, I'm not mad about it. You're, I'm still going to help you as much as I can, but if there's a better one-one. Um, so I think that what makes a good mentor is, is what you want to get out of it. Um, and I forgot the second part, so go ahead. I actually want to jump in on that real quick. Um, yeah, go, go. To the previous question and answer, it, it feels kind of related. Um, so what, like what Rando was saying about like kind of this, it, it reminded me of the, the whole idea of like mentoring versus tutoring. Um, I don't want to just be there to answer some technical question because it, it's like when you interview someone, you're not really looking for someone that maybe like can pair it back information to you. You want someone that is going to show you how they think. And I think that that's important for for a mentor mentee relationship. I, as a mentor, am more interested in helping someone find the answer themselves and not just giving them that answer. So that's a very important part of that relationship. And whatever I can do to be transparent about that and to, to share my experiences and not what I learned, but how I learned it and connect on a personal level where that's something that can be communicated well, I think that's an incredibly important part of being a mentor. Excellent. Uh, Moose, do you want to follow up on that? I think you're, I don't know if you're muted or unmuted. Don't see it. I'm unmuted. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. So I currently uh, mentor uh, in inside of work. Uh, we have an internship program. So I've constantly been evaluating myself and seeing how I do, and I'm always overly critical on myself. Um, but I think that what makes a good mentor slash mentee bond um, is the ability to actively listen, but then also off of that listening, um, really ask those guiding questions on, you know, where you want to go and get to the, the meat and potatoes of goals uh, for somebody that you're trying to help or, or for somebody who's seeking help. Um, and sometimes it's just asking something in a certain way that's going to clarify that goal. Um, and just know that when you do that, that's not hard and fast. Um, so a good mentor is also going to keep it fluid for you. Uh, and, and if you accomplish something, you know, it's still an accomplishment, even if it's not in your goal set and your goals can change. Awesome. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, I just wanted to also say, uh, you know, in my personal life and just in how I try to navigate this world, I really uh, focus on empathy and I really focus on not judging. Um, so trying to be non-judgmental with everything. And so I think just that sort of conscious practice in my regular life will also help me, you know, become a better mentor for, uh, for other people as well as honestly, I'm still being mentored by so many people. So I think that's really important that, your mentor is never done being a mentee, <laughs> so. Very well said. Yeah, Rubix, I thought did you'd raise your hand because you wanted to say something or, or that was just waving to the camera. I literally have a bug flying right in front of my face and I'm just like, I, I can't, I, okay, I'm just, sorry. So I'll just ignore me. Yeah, and and just one, one thing to follow up on that, that was, she made an excellent, excellent point is that 
Um, remember, as a mentee, like, cut your mentor. Like, re- just remember that, like, we don't know everything. We are still being mentored. I will sit and listen to, like, Mubix, uh school me for hours and hours because, like, that dude is, like, always going to know more than I do uh, about a lot of things. It's just like how anybody who goes and has a therapist, therapists have therapists. Like, remember that there is that ladder um, and that's uh, I, I had tried a mentor program a while ago by my dear friend. Uh, he's uh, Jimmy Vo on Twitter. He had spun up something like this and I volunteered for it. I was not ready. I let a couple people down and I just wasn't. I thought I was and I wasn't and I still feel bad about it. So, um, you know, yeah, we're we are still being mentored ourselves and you'll see us at a con be hanging with us and our jaws are going to drop at like a certain person that walks by going hold on i want their autograph you know we still do that like every time clay walks by (laughs) um i have another i'm uh, always i'm always yeah never mind sorry uh no no go now you have to answer go what are you gonna say i was gonna say i'm always asking for rando's autograph he still hasn't given it to me yet Uh, yeah, okay. uh, that's because every piece of paper has like a signature line signing over my house to you. I know what you're doing. Clay's right, quiet, so gonna, definitely. Um, I got another interesting question in here, and it says in here, um, I, 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 this is actually a pretty good question. It says, any suggestions for someone with a strong technical education that will be re-entering the workforce after over a decade of changing diapers. Ubi, you're nodding. Do you, you want to take this one? I see both. Well, uh, I, just, I just think it's an excellent question. Um, and well, it's not, it was not a decade, but I took uh, two times a year off to go travel uh, in various parts of the world. So I kind of know a little bit how it feels when you come back. Um, I think, you know, even if like people say that InfoSec is moving extremely fast and that everything changes all the time, but in fact, it's always also the same thing. It's very different, but the foundation is still the same. So yes, the new, the new act or the new vulnerability is, is something new, but the basic there, it's, it's, it's injection, it's a remote uh, code execution, it's, it's whatever. It's, there's not a lot of new technique or the new, uh, things that are groundbreaking. There's new vulnerability, there's new very things. So if you have the very good background, uh, I think you'll pick it up very quickly. Uh, again, I, I, I don't think there's more, there's a, there's a lot of magic here. Uh, you'll need to read, you'll need to uh, uh, go to some conference, uh, just just keep reading, keep keep talking with new people or, or other people, and then you'll catch up whatever you missed. And uh, I think that if your foundation is strong, it's gonna be, it's gonna work for you. Rubix, I see you without uh, the mic. Oh, sorry, random Rubix. No, no, he was first. So yeah, I've actually hired a couple of people in this situation, and um, I find that technical skills are easy. Uh, the life skills that you learn. Uh, whether it's raising children or, you know, helping out with your elderly parents. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people take uh, leaves of absence. And and that is 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 valuable experience. So don't uh, throw it out with the bathwater, you know, bring it because we need that. We need the the the, the stuff that you learned as uh, as as part of that life. Uh, us stuck behind a computer, you know, we, we get stuck in a box and we need, uh, you know, fresh perspectives or ways of looking at things, compassion, empathy, uh, uh, technical skills is, is something you'll learn. So, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's, let's jump in and let's, let's get it, get it done. And, so and say awesome. that if you're Brando? dealing with, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, go, 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 G, go, go, go. No, I'm, I'm just going inter- to interject. If you've been dealing with small children for a decade, you are very well prepared to deal with consulting. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> Cl- clients <laughs> and small children, very similar. Yeah, and my 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 thing real quick because I'm talking a lot, but um, never said like just just the way that the the question was phrased almost makes me think like they're worried about it or they think that it's a detriment. Like here's something that's really gonna help you, especially when you come back in. You're eventually gonna get to an interview 
where the interviewers are going to be bad interviewers and they're going to keep trying to steer that conversation to stuff that maybe you don't know about and always try to steer it back. Use whatever skills that you have to steer the conversation back to make those strengths. You didn't, you didn't take time off. Uh, you ran a small enterprise uh, of people who can't help themselves. And that's all InfoSec is. We're helping people who don't can't help themselves. So that's what you did. That is a core skill. Uh, and I haven't changed a diaper for at least a couple of years now. But um, yeah, don't you don't don't approach that as a negative. Spin it. And uh, my only follow up to that is if you are naturally inclined to go out to conferences and talk to people, work on your networking. If you are not, not all of us are. Figure out a way, translate that thing that you're not comfortable doing into something that you are comfortable doing, which is uh, cultivating a good Twitter uh, feed, cultivating good sources of intel for yourself to learn things. And uh, like like somebody else had said, because my memory is absolute crap, um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Recognize the patterns. You're not that far off. Like, I guarantee you, you're not as far away as you think. Uh, hug me. Uh, yeah, so... I'll be, I'll be honest, like 10 years off, it depends what kind of 10 years off we're talking. 10 years, like I kept up with tech or 10 years I didn't. Um, and I think the biggest hurdle that you were going to run into is going to be HR. Once you get past HR and you talk to me in the interview, within the first three minutes, I'm going to know whether you're full of shit or not. And that's what it comes down to is getting past that HR screen. And I think that's what a lot of us mentors kind of bring to the table is, look, I got, I know someone at this company that has this opening you'd be great for, and it's just bypassing the bullshit screens we all have to go through. And I think that's what a, what a large part of being a mentor is, is don't get discouraged. Any HR person, and we know this, I don't want to talk shit on HR, but like a little bit, um, you know, you take 10 years off, I'm going to see that his person hasn't been working for 10 years. But to Danny's point, to everybody else's point, like we all know mothers. Holy shit, is that backbreaking work that it doesn't translate to a resume, but to anyone that has a child, Jesus, you would put in the hours. So I think the HR screen is going to be your problem, not the technical interview. Keep your chops up and you're good. And all of us will help you as best we can get past that HR hurdle we all face. I yeah, love HR, I, though. I lead. <laughs> Moose, you want to say something? I do. Um, three things, and I'm going to keep it very short because I know I've talked a lot. But uh, one, thank you for asking this question. I think it's really important, and not a lot of people are brave enough to ask it. Um, and, and thank you for, you know, having the strength to put your family first because that is something that not a lot – there are a lot of people in this industry who struggle with that, um, and that's super admirable to at least me. Um, so I want to put that out there. Uh, the second thing is to kind of bounce off of no hack me and say, you know, not only is what he said true, but there's also the added layer of that of if you're asking questions here. You're probably signing up for this program. Uh, you're opening a huge door because sometimes it's about who you know. Uh, and I think that being more involved in the community is really going to be a boon to you. Um, but there are a lot of volunteer positions that you can volunteer for uh, at InfoSec cons, especially right now that we're all remote. Um, so reach out to the different cons that are coming up. Volunteer, put that on your resume. Like, put your home lab on your resume. Put stuff like that on your resume. Because it doesn't need to be, I am at this formal company right now. You can put additional stuff that you've done, research you've done, education you've kept up with on your resume. Write a blog. Uh, showcase the fact that you can write really well on the blue side. If you can write a report, you're golden. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is 10 years of changing diapers. Uh, I have walked into clients that look like a diaper verge after a threat actor has hit them. So that's valid experience. Um, and, and just know that, that you've been looking at the things that we look at every day, no matter what. Awesome. Um, I'll, I'll add a note on, on this. Oh, well, actually, before I go, uh, Ali, want to go for it? Yeah, thanks. Um, I totally agree with everything you know. everyone said. I also think from sort of a tactical perspective, you obviously are going to have a lot on your plate, both with career and life. And um, I think it's probably just really important 
for you to do it yourself or get support to do this, but to really prioritize what is your sort of attack plan? Where are you gonna be focusing your time, resources, and energy? And trying to figure out like maybe kind of doing your own gap analysis or kind of your own SWOT analysis, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and just kind of figuring out like what, what needs to be stronger, what can you work on and really kind of strategically thinking about uh, your priorities because you obviously are gonna have a lot of you know, uh, restrictions on your time and your resources. And then I think also, um, and this is something that hopefully your you know, potential mentor and network and friends can help you with, but I think too, given your circumstances, you are gonna want to maybe proactively seek an organization who embraces you, who embraces your background. And I think that's something that could be really crucial to your success. Um, so I'll just leave it with that. Yeah, no, I think these are very good points. I'll, I'll, I, I actually, I was gonna kind of note on that. You, you, um, if you're dealing with that, I think one of the important things, like like it was said by Noah Hackney, HR is gonna be one of the main problems you're gonna really face, right? But even then, uh, you know, one, you know, learn social engineering. There's always one way that you can, you know, speak to someone, especially they relate. Uh, and if you find that way that it can relate to someone, especially, you know, um, for many of us, having kids is so relatable, right? Um, you can play that as an extent in during that HR, you know, stuff. Obviously, they're going to look at things like, you know, have you, you know, where, where you stop working or not, but then you can, you can change that conversation. And also, it was said before, um, you know, uh, taking care of someone, you know, even if it's changing diapers, you learn a lot of things. You know, risk management. You know, uh, crisis management. Uh, you know, how to respond to incidents. Right. So there's a lot of things that are analogies to security, anyways, because they happen in real life. You can flip all of that in a way that you know, say, hey, I might not have in real life, exp you know, and on that technical subject, but I know what it's like when I have to deal with this. And if, you know, and there are many things in life that align a lot with what we do anyways. So, um, you know, find a way to kind of, you know, make those into stories that you can bring and say, hey, I know this. And that life experience sometimes is much more valuable than the technical experience you can bring. Um, anyone else want to add something to this? Otherwise, um, Ajit, you want to say something? Yeah, go for uh, on it. The, on the topic of conferences, uh, if you have a local B-Sides chapter, I... It's a great place to get started. They tend to be very approachable, and most of them are always looking for help. I know that we are. I help run B-Sides Philly. Uh, if you're in the area, hit me up. We'll, we'll get you involved. Yeah, in that note, uh, uh, we have a few. Yeah, almost every. Oh, go ahead. No, hack me. I'm saying B-Sides DC, B-Sides Charm. If you want to get involved, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, so as far as... Go for it. Go for it, Moose. Shellcon. That's all I wanted to say. Shellcon. I'm yeah. representing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, we, I think as far as conference goes, we covered quite a bit of uh, ground in there. I shouts to the Shelton crew as well. You know, um, a few of the B-sides. Um, we got Circle City Con, right? Uh, yeah, there you go. See? You got you to gotta, you gotta show this. So there's plenty of uh, conferences, some even that I, I really haven't uh, gone. Uh, Hushcon is another fun conference. Um, so... Um, yeah, get involved on those. But uh, there's another question that came up as well from um, the audience. Um, and someone is asking, do any of you mentors, um, you know, help um, or partake or mentor in the local high school in any way? Ali? Oh, sorry, a little burn there. Um, yeah, so I'm actually so excited. Uh, it's a relatively new effort. But I, uh, bad OPSEC, but I'm in the DC area and um, I just made a new friend over Twitter and uh, he is actually, has already started an effort to provide free IT and also security training, uh, basically a program to the black youth in DC who are, you know, notoriously historically underserved and underprivileged. And I'm really honored that he's considering to bring me on to help um, so I'll have more on that actually soon, um, but that will be actually primarily for the high school age uh, for the kids in DC. So. Awesome, Brando. 
Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, plug for a very good friend of mine. Um, he is on Twitter at uh, Simple Skink, S-K-I-N-K. He gave a talk at Circle a couple of years ago. And this guy has done a ton, a ton of work reaching out to his local school community, I think in like the Louisville uh, area. So first point of order is to go follow him, pick his brain. His DMs are open. He's done. And he actually had, did a really good talk. So go and search for Simple Skink uh, and talk at Circle City. I think it was like 2017 or 2018. Anyway, on from that, um, I recently, not high school kids, but I uh, I recently um, uh, g- gave, a, gave a talk to four different classes of middle schoolers. And that was a complete eye opener about how they give and receive information. And by the way, if you use Facebook, they will make fun of you. Um, so I got in by accident because the i have this is gonna sound super pretentious but the dude who cuts my grass <laughs> uh is also a uh high school teacher and uh, teaches pe in middle school and i was like well i should be cutting your grass first of all second of all he got me in there um if if somebody is thinking about being a mentor and trying to get into schools or if you are in high school and have never gotten a good speaker uh it is incredibly incredibly hard I have found to get into schools, it is hard to get them to return phone calls because like, I I, I actually don't know why. Um, But uh, yeah, so if you're thinking about mentoring, go follow Simple Skink. He has fought all of these fights for you already. Um, And um, if you want to do it, um, it is super rewarding. Uh, Just know that there's, like we talked before about uh, ways to give and receive information. Even among adults, it's hard. So be prepared to really have to translate. Um, And I want to do more of it because that is a skill talking to high schoolers that I have yet to master or that I ever will because they all stay the same age and I keep getting older. I don't know. Yeah, I'll add to that. I don't know if that was an answer to anything. (laughs) No, I think that's 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 good. Um, Personally, I do volunteer from time to time my time. Um, And this is actually one of the things that I found, Uh, you know, the. I go to, you know, maybe not sometimes I've only been to high school twice, but I've gone to elementary or junior um, schools. And one of the coolest things that I like to do is take some of the badges uh, to, to those schools and uh, and use it sometimes as gadgets and props to talk about hackers and so forth. Because um, they have a good way to kind of get, you know, everyone engaged, even if they, especially in high school, uh, the times that I use them. So, uh, but yeah, there's some challenges with that. Uh, the place I work, there, there is a bit of a, a program where um, e- if you are from um, Latin heritage and you speak Spanish, like in my case, you know, we, we volunteer to, you know, go to a university or some other place and kind of, you know, do be on a panel or do a talk or presentation. So, um, yeah, it's is slightly different to be mentoring someone, at, uh, you know, at that level. And it also comes with a few constraints. Um, so, you know, where you do it, how you do it, uh, you we always have to be mindful on, on both of the sides, especially at that age level uh, and the role of a mentor, right? Um, so whenever I engage in that, I try to make sure that it is never a one-on-one personally. It's more like a setting where it's pr- pretty public and it's in a group, you know, setting just because it's the easiest way to answer many questions. And also because I'm not qualified to kind of have that, you know, that setting with someone, um you know, I'm not tutoring. And I think that's very important to kind of touch on this, right? There's a distinction between tutoring and mentoring. And, you know, um, that will not be the demographic that, you know, I personally feel confident to provide some sort of uh, mentoring. I was a teenager once and, <laughs> you know, I, I felt like many things during that age. So I think that's an important thing to kind of note. And with that said, um, we do have another question that came in as well. And it says, may the panel speak on you know, uh, goal setting over the ambitious uh, goals, you know, so if you set an over ambition goal, how to manage your workload and burnout, you know, putting pressure on yourself to succeed at all costs. Basically, we're talking about burnout. Uh, Miteki? Yeah, I, I can actually, I think I can start to speak on that. So I have constantly struggled with doing, trying to do too much and uh, burning out or getting really close to burning out. So uh, one example is actually um, at the start of this pandemic. So my work went re- started going remote in uh, in mid March, um, and around the same time, just right as we right as we went remote, I actually got COVID, 
and I wound up being sick for about two, two and a half months. Um, if you ever heard of like a COVID long hauler, that was me. It's horrible. Do not recommend zero of 10, like do not recommend. Um, but of course what wound up happening was I had an amazing supportive boss who, um, who pretty much let me kind of just, you know, I, I took, I wanted to take like a week or two off maximum. And then I started trying to work and I felt like, I felt a lot of guilt about like, like trying to work when I was still really sick and, um, I felt like I didn't perform enough. So I wound up just taking on an insane amount of work when I started to feel better. And in the last like two or three weeks, I basically had like three major projects all like crescendo at the same time. And I, I hit a point where like I woke up in the morning and I just dreaded the day. And I realized that like I kind of did that to myself. And I, I have to be realistic about what I'm capable of doing and what I'm not capable of doing. And I've always been this way. Like I, I push so hard and I just keep going. And like, like I said, I'm, I'm also a part-time grad student. And if anyone has ever been to grad school, like it's, it's kind of an insane rush and it's full of a lot of overachievers. And you, you have a kind of constant imposter syndrome where you think that everyone is way smarter than you and they can do the project in one hour when it takes you like 12 or 24, whatever it is. So, you know, I, I've had to like be careful with myself and let myself just fail a little bit and set smaller goals and and like actually delegate where it's possible to delegate like these projects i could have trained someone else to do this part or that part or you know reassign something and i for whatever dumbass reason chose not to do that and uh and that's kind of like i'm still like paying for that a little bit and it's a constant struggle anyone else moose i see you uh so that question uh hit home because i am i am known <laughs> for my burnout uh i almost struggle saying no to things when they come in um and i am a hyper technical person so like i want to know the inside detail on how everything works and it's a problem i'm also a perfectionist also a problem um and uh i have to i have to go ahead and give a shout out to him my intern right now that i have that i'm mentoring uh wrote a blog post this past week and part of his blog post was the best advice I've gotten recently was take a break. Um, and so for you, like, if you're trying to eat the elephant, it's okay. You just have to do it in parts. And I think having overly ambitious goals is great. I've had them. Um, I was working beyond full time doing SOC IR, uh, completing my master's degree in DFIR at the same time. Um, and volunteering for another organization, uh, and I didn't sleep much, and that wasn't exactly healthy. So, you know, as, as a mentor, I, I'm never going to say what you should or shouldn't do, but I might ask a lot of questions and share my life experience and say, hey, you know, these are the kinds of things that, uh, that have helped me. Did you remember to eat today? How much have you slept this week? You know, some things like that, that, um, you know, uh, my boss said to me recently, I'm taking Monday and Tuesday off, by the way, because I, I haven't slept much recently, but they, they say to me on a frequent basis of, you know, we'll always have IRs, but we only have one other. Um, and I think that's a really good way to look at it for you. Have those overly ambitious goals, shoot for the moon, but there's only one you. So keep yourself alive while you're doing Awesome. Um, Rubik's? Yeah, I wanted to, to um, you know, call out something and you know, give some words to, you know, what people would feel in, in different situations. Because uh, there's stress and then there's burnout. And and really there's a difference. And, uh, and you can have a stressful work career and be happy and productive. Uh, and stress doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Uh, burnout is when that stress is is doing different things to you. Uh, so, you know, go Google that stress versus burnout, uh, and you can kind of see the differences there and, and help measure yourself. Am I just in a stressful situation or am I approaching burnout? And, and because the ways that you respond to that is a little bit different. So I wanted to throw that out there, give those skills to anybody that's listening, uh, is, is that... Uh, uh, to, to, to recognize that and, and be able to respond accordingly. 
Awesome. Um, I'll introduce part of that. So we go into the final notes with a personal note. Uh, there's a coworker of mine, if he's watching or he will ever watch, that uh, has told me many times, you said yes, right? You know, you, you tend to say yes too much. Um, and it is definitely a thing that some of us learn to deal and learn to, to so learn to say no, and it's okay to say no. Uh, there will be more time to try new things and experience things, but it's completely fine. And the sooner you learn to do that, um, you will you will be able to succeed even more because you're able to funnel all of the time that you have into that one primary task, and instead of you know try to find more hours of the day that you don't have to do all the other things that you're raising your hand for. So if you want to learn it from me, then learn to say no. Uh, so hi to my coworker. All right, so we're at the end of the panel and this is the time for us to basically end. And I want to give everyone an opportunity. You got about a quick minute to just go through, you know, last, last comments regarding the program. Uh, maybe you want some simple advice to end. Uh, it's totally up to you. So, um, you know, uh, do you want me to do it the same way that um, we did it before from the top and the bottom, or is that fine? You're taking? All right, take it away. Um, I just want to say it's it's been absolutely awesome to to work on this, and we've gotten an amazing surge of interest. And I'm I'm super excited to delve into like how how this is going to work. So um, it's probably, we're not going to wind up with any um, assignments, at least for probably a week or so. Um, if you know people that are interested in mentoring, please send them over, uh, Boutine Village slash meet a mentor with dashes. Um, and, and I just want to say that, you know, we're really, we want to be cognizant about how uh, people have different experiences. And um, we didn't really have time to address a lot of the questions that kind of came up. Um, but um, one of the things that, happened was last night uh, a bunch of us actually had this like random zoom call and it wound up being like the most philosophical zoom call i think i've ever been on um and one of the things that came up was different experiences so my experience as a woman who's also gay in the workforce means that i'm kind of an honorary man and that means that my experience of things as like a super assertive like very outspoken steamroller of a human being is not going to be the same as as a more like a more feminine woman's would be and all experiences are valid and um and i think all of us that want to be a mentor are trying our hardest to recognize that those differences exist and some of the most important things that we can do is to just is to just believe people to believe women believe black people believe people of color and and to really like to take that into consideration so i hope that that we're able to achieve that for all the people that apply to be mentees. Awesome. Yeah, good point. Um, actually, just a quick thing. Uh, we, we collected some, uh, I think we so far got a few uh, mentee submissions. Do you know what count are we? Are you checking? Uh, we're, we're almost at 200. And um, so the in... huge surge, uh, mostly mentees. So we are actively looking for more mentors. And you people are really interested in technical skill acquisition, uh, developing confidence, interpersonal skills, and imposter syndrome is is definitely high in that list. Um, and and also like things like interviews and, and things like that. And you people love DFIR too. Like everyone wants to do DFIR. It's great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. So as you heard, we're looking for mentors. And if you're MNT. You know, we 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 have a we have an, a a line to go through, so don't don't matter. Just come in and sign up, Rando. Uh, first of all, uh, suck it, red team. Uh, second of all, um, uh, just a just a word about um, just a word about projection, right? Right now, everybody who is either thinking about uh, being a mentee or has already applied, um, like, don't project yourself out for failure. And don't project yourself out for like conquering the world. That's a good thing to have, but but the, take this seriously, right? If if you get into this like uh, get into the, this groove with us, and all of a sudden you start projecting about how it's not going to do you any good, or I'm not a fit for this, or I said whatever, keep always keep in mind to not project. You cannot tell the future. You don't know for sure if you're going to fail or if you're going to succeed. Uh, 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 spoiler alert: you're going to do both multiple times so just take this seriously in the moment every single minute 
that you do this. That is the minute that you are concentrating on. And then let that take you forward. Don't project where you're going to end up. Take it seriously. And I promise we will too. Awesome. Rubix? Do you hear me? Rubix, Rubix? I think he's muted. Now, we'll skip him. Pulling at clay. That's asking. Yeah. I don't think he can hear me. We'll skip him for now. Uh, he disconnected. So, all right. He's coming back. Let's see. Maybe he, maybe audio is, is back on. Can you, all I'm right. Awesome. Safe mode. <laughs> but did, did my technology fail right at the right moment? Okay. Yeah. Uh, your turn. Your turn. All right, all right. It's my turn. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I, you know, always enjoy uh, hearing, you know, what people out there and what they're facing, uh, the, the variety of things. Um, and I do want to echo the, the uh, you know, it's, it's okay to fail. And, uh, and and also kind of bring back the, the burnout thing. Um, I've had a uh, little short stints of absolutely no technology jobs in between uh, my 28 year career where I've been like, I'm going to be a bartender or I'm going to uh, uh, help, uh, you know, rebuild houses or, you know, refer it was, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You'll get there. It's, it's, you're gonna, you know, you're going to be at points in your life. We're just going to want to do something else and to make it, you know, full 30, almost 30 years that I have, you know, you've got to take some breaks and whatnot. So even if you are not ultimately successful and, you know, have this ramp of exactly you met your goals, uh, you know, that doesn't mean you failed uh, completely and you can't have success. So, uh, uh, you know, we'll work together. We'll find some ways, but understand that uh, we'll ha all have some bumps and bruises along the way. And I look forward to it. Awesome. Thank you for that. G? Yeah, I'd say that success in the program for, for both parties relies on keeping each other accountable and kind of, kind of holding each other accountable and being active, you know, an active participant in your role in that. Um, otherwise, it becomes lopsided and it ends up not working for one or the other party. Um, but I'm, I'm super excited to get this kicked off. Um, you know, it's something that I, I didn't necessarily have coming up in the industry when I was starting out, and I wish I'd had it. So it's going to be good, I hope. Awesome. Ali? I just want to say that I'm so thankful for being invited to this special group of amazing people, and I can't wait to help uh, as many folks as we can. And like I said earlier, just sending the ladder back down. So I can't wait. Perfect. Thank you. No hack me. Hey, uh, to kind of touch on the earlier point, like uh, stress versus burnout, uh, to throw it back to a sports ball reference, you know, are you injured or are you hurt? And, and I think a lot of our careers, like they say, you know, pick a, pick something you love to do. So you fail to set boundaries and you eventually burn out and learn to hate it. Um, don't do that. I, I think my career has kind of pivoted to things where I have been in incredibly stressful situations and have kind of walked that line on burning out. Um, the mentor program, I, I'm super excited to be a part of it. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. And, and that's going to be anything you do in the security industry. Like caveats, I don't know if we're supposed to sell ourselves now. Um, you, you have access to my entire network. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of things. I've walked, anyone who knows me, I've walked a really weird path in life and in career. Um, the only rules, I think they're the same rules for all of us. Like, don't make us regret it. Like, don't be a piece of shit. And eventually, one day, someone is going to ask you to do the same thing for them and do it. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, none of us are going to be here forever. We're trying to build something that will be. And I think this mentor program is a fantastic start. So please take advantage of it. Um, and uh, yes, find me on the internet. So I'll be around. Awesome. Well, well said also. Thank you. Uh, Moose. So I think a lot of good things have already been said. Uh, but for me, one of the things that I would want to leave this off with is uh, my insane speed doesn't need to be your insane speed. Uh, my path is not necessarily your path. What we're here to do as mentors is, you know, be there uh, to lean on, um, be there to bounce ideas off of, and help you find your perfect path, because there's no right or wrong path in InfoSec. Um, and just as a, as a personal aside, um, 
I can be an overwhelming person <laughs> because I'll say, oh yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing shell con things right now. And then, you know, I'm going with my other half uh, to, to do these sides LV things and, and he runs HushCon. So I talk about that a lot and, you know, I'll, I'll be all over the place, but that doesn't need to, like, that doesn't need to translate to, to you or, or any one of us. Like I'm going to throw Danny under the bus um, because he's used to being there. Uh, but he is, constantly involved in everything, which is beautiful. And I love that about him, both as a friend, a human being, and, and somebody in InfoSec. Um, but that doesn't need to mean that that's what you have to do to be successful. Um, and just because you see one of us doing X, Y, and Z thing, doesn't mean that that's our trick or, or recommendation for success. And you don't even have to be InfoSec right now. You can be adjacent. Um, you can be whatever you want to be. We just want to help get you to the point where like step by step you're closer to what's making you happy in life awesome uh where did clay go he he this came and he hid right he's like i'm out of here he's playing the i'm the technical guy so i'm just gonna go and hide clay you still around you want to say something Classic. that's a negative uh, he's gonna say something go 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 um I, i'm just thrilled and um, honored and humble, humbled to be um, a mentor, and I look forward to, um, to to what the future holds. Classy clay words. Love you, man. Uh, <laughs> Scooby. Yeah, well, I wanted to say something clever, but uh, yeah, a lot of folks here uh, already did that. Uh, maybe just one thing. Uh, I think um, you, you said that there's 200 people that want, that that are subscribed as a mentee. Uh, so I know that a few of us today worked on uh, recruiting uh, more mentors, and uh, I know that I've uh, managed to have four more uh, that I would personally love to have as mentors. So uh, I'm extremely proud of uh, some of the people that are coming in this program as mentor as well. So uh, uh, keep following. I think uh, you won't be disappointed with what's coming. And uh, of course, again, all of us here is, is I think we're, uh, or you guys are all good people as well. And uh, I think I can learn also from you and I hope that uh, we will be able to share also together. Awesome, thank you for that. So on that note, we actually did get some, um, you know, maybe some known figures, some other ones that are not that much known, but uh, we're all here trying to give you, you know, some time. Uh, and and we really want you to maximize the time. If you at any point, uh, you know, feel like the match isn't working, um, it's completely fine, as it said before. We also have a very important rule. We have, if you ever, I ever feel like something isn't right, you can report any sort of concerns. And that's completely anonymous. And, you know, we're baked in a path to be able to deal with those things. So we want to make sure that you feel very comfortable and that there are no shenanigans that are taking place. Will you know? Will any of those my or not? Well, we we don't know, but we're doing our best part. At this point, we're running um, basically out of time. I want to invite you to continue to be here with us on the Blue Team Village, um, and then uh, we are going to have game night from the Blue Team Village. So if you want to see some folks that are here or other people partaking, we encourage you to you know, stick around with us, play with that. Um, I want to. The only thing I want to say is thank you, Miteki. You helped me quite a bit on this. Thank you, all of you mentors, to be part of this, you know, uh, program and journey. Uh, you know, we're. I'm very looking forward to see what it is. And just, you know, there are plenty of conferences that are going to happen. So if you want to learn more, or you know, you want to, you know, partake of something, the folks from Colonel Colonel Con, you know, say hi to the crew. Shalcon is, you know, doing call for papers. So there's plenty of opportunities. Um, I'll end with, we have the Meet a Mentors channel. Come in, sign up. If you're a mentor, please sign up, reach out to us. Um, and another thing is, if you are one of the villages in DEF CON and you want to send a mentor, you want to partake with us, you know, come over. You know, we, you can take some of the stuff we're trying to build and, you know, take it over to your village. Um, so, you know, be part of this adventure with us. And with that said, I just want to say thank you. And, you know, we'll look forward to hear from you. All right.